Today I've got a Retina Reflex 4 camera that's been sent to me for servicing. And the main problem with this one is that it's completely jammed up. Now, you can see through the viewfinder, so the mirror's down, that's in the locked position. But it doesn't release and it doesn't go anywhere and the film advance lever makes nasty noises. So what I'm expecting to find is damage to the gear on the top of the film advance shaft, damage to the cocking rack, or damage to the transfer shaft that takes the action from the film advance through to the cocking of the shutter mechanism at the front. However, I've been tricked before, so it's anyone's guess what I'll find in here. So my first task is actually to rewind the film because this camera was sent to me with a film in it. Okay, well here's the film that was in it. I've got that removed. That's all safe and sound. And we'll remove the lens. And you can see that the shutter blades are partly open. I swing the film advance lever. It's cocked. It's dropped back against the body. The shutter doesn't fire. So something really odd's going on here. So time to get into the camera. And we'll start as usual with the rewind. Now the rewind knob on the Retina Reflex 4 has obviously got a little flip up lever. The rest of the body of this is made out of plastic. It's pretty fragile, it's not uncommon to find it's got cracks in it. Uh, do your best to save it if you do take one apart. There are no new parts. All replacement knobs have to come from an organ donor. And finding an organ donor is always difficult. Right, so we'll take this screw off here. And we have two screws down in here. One screw on the end of the top cover. And we can't lift the top off because we still have our meter setting button on the back. And we'll see if that will unscrew with my fingers. Often they will. Depending on how enthusiastic the last service person was. That one won't. So I'm going to have to resort to something else. And I'll probably use these pliers. Well, I thought that had broken free, but it still doesn't want to turn loose. Try a bit more. I'm going to have to find a friction tool to deal with that.
see if I can twist that off with the edge of a piece of rubber. Nope. Back to this. It really is reluctant. But it looks like I'll have to resort to plan B. And plan B consists of using one of these which is an extremely fine file made for jewellers for cutting slots and screws. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a slot in that button. That should suffice. Now I'll get a very fine screwdriver. That's a bit mutilated looking. Let's try one that's a bit sharper. Let's see if I can Yep, that's turning it. Uh, it's turning, but it's not lifting out. That's unusual. Okay, I suspect that when that was installed, somebody over tightened it and stripped the thread. So it is just not unscrewing. Okay, that's going to take more work. Let's see if I can slide a uh, scalpel blade edge under that screw. Give me some tension. And try unscrewing it again. Where's the screwdriver I was using? That one. Well that'll explain why it wasn't coming loose when I was using friction tools or pliers. It was never going to come loose. I don't want to just lever that off. It may be fine, it may just snap the screw and uh, I can replace the screw, I'm not bothered by that. I'd much rather it attempted to unscrew. I'm going to have many options here. Let's see if I can pop that screw off completely.
that is exceptionally reluctant. All right, let's see if I can get a good grip on that and force the damn thing off. All right, the screw is off. We can lift the top cover off. Our flash connection is still connected here. The connection to the hot shoe, so I'll just remove that screw and pop the top cover to one side. And the little connecting piece there, we'll pop that to one side. We can take the shroud from the front of the meter off. I'm going to have a look at that screw that I've just forced out of there. That was a very odd thing. Yes, it looks like it had been screwed right through past the thread and stripped out. So hopefully that thread will be fine. If not, I'll be replacing this component on the meter because the exposure meter otherwise works. Now the little window from the top of the over the viewfind over the exposure meter window that pops loose. It's only held in by tiny two dots of glue and they've usually dried out and fallen off by this stage. It can't go anywhere, it's trapped between this point and the and the top cover, so it never gets lost until you remove the top cover. So I've got to remove the meter next. And the meter, what I'll do for that is I will set the meter to ASA 10. Get this to go. ASA 10. I'll set my shutter speed to B. It doesn't want to move there. No, it doesn't. That suggests there's something odd going on here. I suspect those front rings have been played with and they're mispositioned. I cannot select B and F1.9, which was what I would normally select. So there are three screws hold the meter in place. Now the meter has to come off now. Be very careful with this screw in particular. That the meter's held in with it's got a little fork on the end of it that goes under that screw, so we don't need to take the screw out completely. There are two screws here, and they do need to be taken out completely. They're very short. I'll pop those to one side. I'll get back that one that did its best to get away. Oh, sorry for knocking you about. I should be able to lift that meter out, and I can. Okay, so I'll pop that meter carefully aside into a container nice and clean, no junk. That screw that I'd loosened was here. Now that holds the cocking rack down in place. You never want to move the cocking rack with that screw loose. Now something's rattling around here. I think it's the oh, it's the shaft from the rewind. So I'll pop that out of the way so it's not rattling in anywhere. Next task, lift off the prism. So for the prism, we have two screws, one either side. The large black head screws we want out. The prisms 
and more particularly the screen at the bottom of this finder assembly is very delicate that plastic easily scratches you can't get rid of the marks if you scratch it so you have to take great care not to scratch it so we'll lift out this that screw out of the way lift the prism and finder assembly out of the way that looks very clean and I will wrap that in tissue and put it aside out of harm's way while I'm working on the rest of the camera back to the camera what have we got here? we've got one shim from underneath the finder we'll pop that over there I don't immediately see any problem with the cocking rack and the gear it couples to at the top there I'm going to check the position of the rings at the front of the camera because I do suspect that they're not quite right which means that someone's been in there playing um, I'll check that and uh, hopefully I'll find nothing wrong it's getting a bit buried and stuff here so I'll just put away the pieces I'm not using and there should be the appropriate screwdriver was here a second ago and it disappeared where's it gone there it is The story that went with the camera was that the camera was working fine, had been as they normally do, and uh, suddenly it made horrible noises when winding on, and the owner stopped and sent it to me. I'm looking at the relative positions of these components. they are correct so that looks like that's right this lever here, this ring serves to open the aperture on the lens and I can see that that's very very sticky so I suspect the lens killed this camera and nothing else so looking at this, this is set to one second that's correct, that's the position of the ring when I took it off the front of the camera and these coupling gears here can come off that idle pinion and this shaft which drives through to this wheel at the back and couples with the cord on the meter that is unusually stiff it's um, wouldn't expect that to be as stiff as that, that should turn quite easily it's not, oh, the cord's not broken that should be fine so back to this problem in hand, that's screwed in tight yes it will not complete the cocking action and it's got a nasty feel when that comes back 
Right. Let's remove the rack and see if there's anything obvious at the top end. I'll lift this meter wheel so I can get the rack out. And the rack, I'm checking this rack carefully. These racks are hardened. They're not prone to damage. And that one looks fine. Now the gear on the top of the advance there. The teeth on that are damaged. They've got a sweep to them. It's like the teeth have been pushed over. So that's damaged. Someone's had that gear off in the past. I can tell because the lacquer that's on there is not factory standard. So that gear is damaged. It means that it's been very much stressed up. Whether it's stressed up enough to actually jump the teeth, it's difficult to say. Anyway, we'll delve deeper. I'll continue removing things from the top of the camera. I thought before I started that this camera had the look of a camera that had never been serviced. Just the general appearance looked exceptionally tidy. It looked like one that had lived out its life at the back of the cupboard somewhere until it had been fairly recently rediscovered and put into service. But seeing the lacquer on there it tells me that it has been serviced in the past. And having, it having been serviced in the past, that probably explains that meter button. I'm fairly confident that someone over-tightened that and made a mess of that job. Now that's interesting. A little square of leatherette just popped out, or leather. Now that's one of the buffers from the mirror. So that's loose. Um, if something like that fell into an unfortunate place, that would certainly be enough to cause trouble. Now did I recover two screws from that and rewind? Just one. No, they're both there. So that's the top off there. I'll flip it over, work on the bottom, and then we can take the front off. Well, the leatherette patch on that rewind, on the advanced lever rather. That's a bit loose. That's been re-glued. So certainly someone's been in there. The leatherette patch on the tripod socket. That's been re-glued. So someone's been in there. We can 
I'll lift off the surround for the tripod socket, hopefully. If someone has been exceptionally heavy handed trying to screw a tripod screw onto the, the camera, this thread can be flared out. And if it's flared out, you can't get this section off. But no, that's okay, it's good. So the advanced lever, let's get rid of some of that. Yeah, that's another layer of um, adhesive and stuff there. I think that very likely that's not even the original leatherette patch. That the original leatherette patch was damaged when someone took the camera apart. They've replaced it. But being a lazy bastard, they didn't bother about removing all the remains of the previous patch and just glued it over the top. Clear these screw slots or we'll be getting nowhere. A little flat battery on that camera apparently. Let's hope this particular battery has a bit more life in it. We shall see. Let's see if these screws will come loose. I think probably a drop of solvent there wouldn't hurt. Give them the mixture of corrosion and adhesive. A trick for getting rid, getting loose, very tight screws in a situation like this is often to first attempt to tighten the screw slightly, which will often break the thread loose. And then you can loosen it. They're very nasty looking. They got whatever that adhesive was. It's caused those screws or to rust. Those steel screws, of course, and they're going into aluminium. So dissimilar metals, a little bit of uh, electrolysis action, and it all goes bad. Right, so the leatherette. See if we can get the leatherette off. That's just about falling away. There, it's a little bit fragile on the retina reflex 4, mostly because it's reduced to such thin sections. I think it's got two lots of adhesive on there, the original adhesive and whatever had been used during previous servicing. I think there's seven screws hold the base plate on here. It's fun, fun to find underneath the uh, glue. There's one. That old adhesive is quite brittle. Or well, one of the layers of it is anyway. Must have it two more screw there. And the others here.
Mané. Last one here. Exceptionally well disguised today. All right. That's the frame counter. And we'll just remove that piece. bit of paper there but that's just from around the inside of the, the base we can remove the front of the camera so how's that battery holding up that's good there's a leatherette patch on the shutter release button little rectangular piece easily lost but fortunately easily replaced now this button's got a tiny crack in it that's not uncommon I'll clean that very carefully and then I'll super glue down that crack to make sure that it goes back together and stays there see if I can lift these leatherettes it's going well they're comparatively pliable you can see why you'd want the chrome trims off the body, top and bottom, to allow you to slide your scalpel blade under these leatherettes. Now, a vulnerable spot for the leatherette is right on the corner. Because the leatherette's been effectively pulled over the corner, it's often very well stuck there. Let's see if I can get under that leatherette, loosen it at the hinge line. There it is, it's fallen away. So you can see remains of adhesive and corrosion products on that leatherette, and similar here. That'll have to be cleaned off before reassembly. That crackling sound you might have heard there is the glue layer breaking away from the, the body. It means that it's uh, something that goes brittle when it sets. The glue, I mean. And people have used all sorts as adhesives over time. Shellac was common going back when leather was the covering material of choice. That leather it's off in one piece. So, four screws to remove the front. That screw head shows quite a bit of rust. Um, it means either moisture has got through the leatherette or it's just because of the nature of the adhesive that was used. Perhaps it was something that was water-based something that was a little bit acidic, something of that nature. Whatever it was, just enough to cause trouble. Alright, so that's loose. Our flash contact here needs to be unhooked from the body and I can lift the shutter off entire. I need to gather up 
The spacer washers, there should be three at each position here. There's only two there. Two there. So I'd three. I'll just check that they're not loose. There they are. Yeah, all those spaces were there, they're present. I lift off the front cam and I'm checking the teeth. The teeth are all present, so that's fine. I'll lift off that main transfer shaft cam and I'm checking closely the teeth on the back of it to make sure they're all present. And they are. And that nothing looks distorted. So that's fine. I'll lift off my meter cable, the cord. There's a screw here that stops them from un coming loose from that. Uh, Pulley. I lift that cable off. Lift the drum off the bottom and just unwind this. Alright, so I can take the top drum off. And I'm down to the body here. I just want to check the action of the mirror. Now, I mentioned there was a small black patch loose. It's come from here. There's its mate over there, which is sort of sitting on a little bit cockeyed. I'll lift off both of them and re-glue those down. They just sit there and they just serve to stop that thing from whacking up into the bottom of the uh, viewfinder mechanism, I think. Well, that swings up nicely. Cocking plate swings down smoothly. Mirror swings, swings down smoothly. No obvious problem with the action of the mirror components there. That's all good. The uh, film advance, I'm just moving this with my finger. It's very gummy. See how reluctant that is to swing back? See how slow that action is? It should just snap back. Means that the lubricant there, the grease, has basically just turned to treacle. Um, that's all coming out to be cleaned anyway. One thing that's quite common with cameras, particularly these ones, is the tripod socket is often loose. The screws come loose uh, just because screws work loose all the time. This one's not bad. Often they're loose. What happens when the tripod socket's a bit loose on the camera body is people will put their camera on the tripod, do the, do the tripod screw up and the camera doesn't seem to be firm. So then they go all 200 pound gorilla on it and do the tripod socket up even more and the camera still doesn't seem to be firm. And it's because the screw they're doing up is already tight. And what's happening is that the tripod socket's loose in the camera. Eventually that sort of behaviour will actually pull the screws right out of the tripod socket. Um, in which case it'll never be tight. Alright, that um, looks quite straightforward. I'm going to pop that to one side. I want to check this shutter mechanism and see if there's any obvious reluctance to cock. 
so I'll take my transfer shaft and see if that will rotate it. It's very tight, but it does move and it does complete. Okay, so the shutter's basically there, it's basically sound, it certainly needs to be serviced. That was very tight. It was very hard to get that to cock. So if it's that hard to get the shutter to cock, it means that things are very gummy in there and will certainly need to be clean. It's even possible that the that, that there's some damage to the shutter. I already know that there's something odd about the lens, that that diaphragm mechanism is exceptionally sticky. It's possible that the camera has been dropped on its nose. That case shows a few little, that cap shows a few little marks. If you get a camera and you drop it on its nose so that the lens hits the ground, particularly if it's in a leather case, you can't see any mark on the camera at all. But what it does is it compacts things. It compresses the shutter. It'll compress the lens too, depending on your camera, that's where the damage will be. And so things that should move smoothly in there, fail to move smoothly. Right, I'm getting a flat battery warning, so I'm going to stop right here.